You've probably seen a lot of ads. Cross River Rail. A lot of news articles. Cross River Rail. And heard a lot of discussion about Cross River Rail. But what is it? And why is it it? And what's wrong with it? And what can be done? Let's find out. To begin our journey of knowledge, we first need to know about Brisbane's heavy rail network as it was and is before Cross River Rail. The network in its current state looks like this, with the Caboolture, Redcliffe, Shawncliffe, Airport, Doombin and Fernie Grove lines to the north, and the Ipswich, Springfield, Gold Coast, Beanley and Cleveland lines to the south, all coming together through the city between Bowen Hills and Roma Street. This map is what we'll be working with in getting to understand Cross River Rail, and you'll notice it's a bit different to the one that's generally in use, and that's because this map is showing, in a simplified manner, the tracks which are shared by each train line as they come into the city. So even though the Cleveland and Beanley lines have different destinations past Park Road, they both share the same stretch of track through South Bank and the city. So Brisbane has got two different rail sectors. There's the mains, which carry the Caboolture and Redcliffe lines to the Ipswich and Springfield lines, and then there's the Suburbans, which carry all of the other lines through the city. And what's important about this is that because each line has to merge with each other coming into the city, they all share the same amount of track. And so the whole sector is constrained capacity-wise by the capacity of that single stretch of track in the centre. For the mains, that's 24 trains an hour, and for the Suburbans, that's 28 trains an hour. And the reason why there's a difference, it might seem a little strange, we'll come back to that later, but don't forget about it. Just a slight disclaimer, these maximum capacity numbers are what the maximums will be once the signalling across the network is upgraded as a separate project across River Rail. From this point on, I'll be talking about the capacity of the network itself, not the frequencies of the trains as they currently are. So even though the mains at the moment only run 17 trains per hour to the north, its capacity is 24 trains an hour. Cross River Rail first came about in its earliest form in the 2011 proposal by the state government. In the original design, all main sector trains coming from the north would travel through main yards on a great big bridge and go into the tunnel just after Exhibition Station. Then they would go through the city, through the Gabba, with an underground station below Park Road, and then continue without stopping all the way to Yorong Pili, where they would come up, continuing on towards Beanley and the Gold Coast. And it was that last section which caused the first big problem. Here is Yerong Pili Station, where behind me a whole row of houses would have been destroyed to make way for an upgraded station. And the locals were not happy. They were adamant that the project to be changed, and in the end it might have been, but it didn't matter, because in 2012 the government lost their re-election, and a new government came in and cancelled Cross River Rail. In its place was UBAT, an underground bus and train tunnel following mostly the same alignment, but now instead of two single tracks, there would have been one double-decker tunnel with buses on top and trains underneath. They also shortened the tunnel entrance, getting rid of the debacle at Yurong Pili and saving money on the project. Instead, the tunnel would surface just after Park Road Station. And this obviously would have meant a big difference for public transport users, if it was ever built, but it didn't matter because in 2015, the government lost their re-election and the original government came back in, cancelled UBAT and uncancelled Cross River Rail, bringing back the Cross River Rail design, but changing it around slightly, which led to the 2016 version of the project. Ditching the bus aspect and going back to single track tunnels, the new proposal kept the shortened tunnel from UBAT, but what they did change was the way the northern connection was set up and the way they did it was very good. Remember, the goal of the project was to get more capacity from the north, from Caboolture and Redcliffe, down into the city. And what was currently causing the constraints is that limited section of track between Northgate and the city. So just adding another sector, the Cross River Rail, the physical tunnel itself, isn't actually going to increase capacity. So what they did was they looked at what had already increased capacity from uh, the Suburbans to the main sector already, from 28 trains an hour to 24. And the reason is, it's the double-sided platforms at Roma Street and Central Station. So how do the double-sided platforms at Roma Street and Central work? Well, 
If we take a look at the mains, where there's no double-sided platforms, when Toby comes into the station and is letting off all of his passengers, the, train, the next train down, Thomas, has to wait outside the station for Toby to leave before he can come in, which takes a lot of time, which means they have to be far apart so they don't crash into each other. But on the Suburbans, when Rosie is coming along and she stops at the station, Percy can still come in much closer in behind and he can stop and pull up next to her while she goes ahead to the next station. And because of this, they can fit much more closer together on the Suburbans compared to the mains. And this is what they've done on that section between Northgate and Bowen Hills. By having double-sided platforms at Northgate and Wollowan, and by having the trains run express, which means they can go faster because they're not stopping, they can fit much more trains through that capacity than they normally otherwise could. So they can get, instead of 24 trains an hour, 30 trains an hour through that single stretch of track. So, with 30 trains an hour coming from Northgate into the city, that's too much for just one sector to handle. So they were going to be split from the mains and the tunnel, and then we're going to do that through a flyover junction at Main Yards. What the flyover would have been is essentially a small bridge to allow trains on the mains to jump over the trains on the cross river rail tracks going into the tunnel. And this would have meant that both lines could seamlessly merge with each other as they came out and up to the north. And that was the 2016 project. It wasn't great in the southern end, but at least they improved the northern end from the 2011 version, right? In 2019, the project was changed. And what the change did was remove all of that neatness at Maine with the separation of the double-sided platforms and instead go back to the 2011 proposal of just have all the mains tracks go into the tunnel. These trains are then going to surface past Park Road and continue on to the Gold Coast and Beanley. Then with the inner city mains sector free of any trains, the Shorncliffe, Doombin and Airport lines are going to be sent through them and out west to Ipswich and Springfield and the Fernie Grove line is going to have the suburban tracks all to itself, connecting up with the Cleveland line after heading through the South Bank area. And that's where we are today. Well, remember the initial goal Cross River Rail was set up to try and achieve, creating more capacity for trains from the north to the south of Brisbane. That's the Caboolture and Redcliffe lines to the Beanley and Gold Coast lines. So let's really dive into the frequencies of these trains and see if that's going to be achieved. Starting from the south, there are 20 trains per hour currently of capacity for the Beanley and Gold Coast lines because they're sharing the track with the Cleveland line coming into the city. When the tunnel's built, they'll be, won't, they won't be sharing that capacity anymore. So they'll get 24 trains every hour of capacity. So that's an increase of just four trains every hour, which is at least something, but it's not much considering the whole scale of the project. From the north, it's much worse because all of the northern lines, the Caboolture and Redcliffe lines, are gonna be directed solely into the tunnel. Their capacity is limited by what can fit into the tunnel, which is the same as the capacity which they currently have. AKA, there's gonna be zero trains per hour of capacity through that whole section, even though that's what the whole project was set up to try and achieve. The capacity is instead being given to the lines which need it the least. The Shoncliffe line, Airport line and Doombin line will be directed through the inner city main sector and on towards Ipswich and Rosewood, meaning they'll be getting 24 trains per hour of capacity, 10 more than they currently have. And that means it's the same amount of capacity that the Clibulture and Redcliffe lines will be getting. And these train lines are not in a high growth scenario. They are not needing more capacity. But the worst case is on the suburban sector. The Fernie Grove line, currently which only gets 8 trains every hour, will be getting instead 28 trains an hour of capacity through the city and connecting out to the Cleveland line. That's ma far more than they currently have and far more than they currently need. It's also more than any other sector, any other line or multiples of lines connected together on the Cleveland line and the, Cle and the Fernie Grove line, which don't need the capacity. Here's the thing, unless they build more stabling out on the Cleveland line so that trains can be stored there in the day, or they add another track to the single track sections which are currently still on the line today, the Cleveland train can't run any more capacity than it currently has. So even if you're saying, 
while we need more capacity on these lines, with crossover rail, unless more work is done later down the track, not part of this project, the Cleveland line isn't even going to be able to use the capacity that it's being given, misallocated by this project. You know, the whole time I've been working on this project, researching, filming, editing, finding out just what the deal is with Crossover Rail, the thought occurred to me, maybe I should talk to someone who knows what they're talking about. Some kind of rail expert who's written a report on Crossover Rail just a few years ago. So I did. David Bannister is a former Queensland Rail employee, rail expert, who in 2019 put together and released this. The Minerva Plan, a detailed description of the problems of crossover rail as I've just explained them and recommended a future strategy for the network on how the problems can be fixed. Unfortunately, since the time the report has been released, construction has gone ahead anyway and now it's too late for the changes to be made. It was really to raise some amount of awareness about what the operational um, future of the network was going to look like once Cross River Rail was 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 open because that 2017 business case was really the last public facing document which had any um, operational outcomes in it um, and obviously the, it, they changed because the infrastructure had changed so um, you know there's a significant amount of public money that's being spent on it and it's a public project so I thought well, this should be in the public domain. People should be understanding what this money is being spent on and what they'll they'll get at it from the end. Um, so that that was really part part of it. Um, and then once I'd gone through that process and developed and seen what was happening and realised that there were these problems with, um, I guess, what I, I saw coming from these infrastructure changes, I wanted to pre present an alternative. Um, so. Um, basically a, a way to improve the outcome and I guess it sort of stems from two creeds to try and follow that is one is don't come to me with problems come to me with solutions and the other one is be the change that you want to see so um, you know on the on the former case you know I provided an, a program of works that would keep the project within the same footprint but allow it to be developed later so it wasn't a case of just being crit critical and saying this won't work or it's suboptimal it was a case of all right, there's issues here, but here is how you can enable, you know, a better outcome in the future. Yeah, so I guess the, the critical thing about what would be the most important thing to enable that to occur, to enable that future um, for rail, is to have a, a clearly defined and agreed upon rail strategy. Because if you don't have basically your end state vision in mind, um, then you can never be certain that you're working towards ultimately where you want to go. So, um, in you know, in that case, if you've got a clear vision about where the rail network's headed, then every project has an onus on it to make sure that it's progressing and developing um, in in that direction. Um, how you get to that as 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 a member of the public, well, there's there's multiple ways that you can you can get involved. So, um, you could join a public transport advocacy group like Rail Back on Track. You know, they're in the news almost every second day um, and you know the forum there is quite active and people talk about it and it is it is viewed by um, people in, in power so they see the comments on the forum and, and all this sort of thing um, engaging with articles on transport in the media so if Brisbane Times is posting things about transport the more comments it gets the more it drives their um, user you know viewership and and advertising revenue and this sort of thing so that means they will put, put more effort towards elements of articles of transport so the more the media picks it up the more it becomes something that's in the public attention and that's again driven by the the users at an individual level of going and reacting to these media articles um, and then the other one uh, is just direct correspondence so write to your minister or write to your local MP and say I'm interested in seeing you know I'm, I'm going to be living here for the next um, seven decades I want to understand how my city is going to evolve and the key part of that is its rail network. I want to understand how public transport is going to be delivered. Where is the strategy for delivering that? So the, the, the more pressure there is, the more interest, um, then the more they'll, they'll 
they'll take it seriously and they'll they'll move towards that. I mean, um, you know, elements of this uh, are viewed sometimes through a slightly political lens, and if it's the political is about what the public wants, and if the public wants more public transport, that's where they get to, and that's only perceived by correspondence. So there we are. Cross River Rail is due to open in early 2026, and it looks like its problems are here to stay. But in the meantime, you'll probably see a lot more ads, a lot more news articles, and hear a lot more discussion about it. But now, you'll be the one to know what its deal really is. Thank you.